Hey guys, what's up? Sandu here. Sorry for zero content this past week, but my six-year-old got a flu and stayed at home with me. And good luck writing an eight-page review or uh, filming anything at all with a kid around you. Anyhow, I've been listening for these IAMs uh, for about one week or so. It's called the Moondrop Starfield. Uh, and let's check them out. So, this is the final production unit, but um, they didn't come with an actual retail box to me. So I am unable to unbox them, but I will tell you that they, they came with uh, these six pairs of silicon ear tips with a pretty nice detachable cable, as you can see, and with the IEMs themselves that are pretty majestic looking. Okay guys, so uh, cable quality seems nice. It's a braided one with a lead structure that uses four core oxygen-free copper conductors. So it's a modern and decent cable considering the price of the overall package. The cable is free of any microphonics, is very flexible and it seems to be durable too. In terms of looks and build quality, start field is carved on a CNC machine from two smaller blocks of aluminium. It feels quite heavy in the hand, it is among the heavier IEMs that I have tested. It has smooth lines around the body, the body surface is slippery and that adds a lot to the comfort level. You can clearly see the spot where the aluminium cover was attached to the rest of the body, but that doesn't bother me at all. Since it lacks multiple balanced armatures and a complicated crossover, it has a medium body size that doesn't stick out too much and doesn't attract a lot of attention. Speaking about that, if it gets a direct sunlight, it will sparkle and will shift colors when looking from a different angle. Starfield is offered only this uh, glittery blue color scheme with the same cable color. The IEM has a standard sized metal nozzle, so it is 4.1 mm in diagonal, so all the third party ear tips will work just fine with them. I have already tested spin fit, lots of uh, silicone and memory foam ear tips with them, and they all work just fine. In terms of tech, this is a single dynamic driver in-ear monitor, so the diaphragm is only 6 micron thickness, but it's rigid and really tough thanks to the carbon nanotube array. Since this is a single dynamic driver IEM, no additional crossover circuitry was needed, so the signal from the source is going directly into the driver assembly and nothing actually stands in its way. Having a slightly higher impedance of uh, 32 ohms, it should not spot the background noise of the source and it should not hiss with noisier uh, portable dApps or with uh, desktop sources. I tested them with few desktop units and I can confirm that I'm hearing a lower noise floor compared to FIO FH7 for example or with the SIMGOT EN700 Pro. At a high sensitivity of 122 decibels per 1 volt, that 10 mm driver will be easily driven even by lower powered sources as mobile phones, Bluetooth adapters and portable dApps. So they work pretty well with my smartphone, so anything that has a headphone jack should drive them pretty easily. In terms of sound performance, my overall impression is that Starfield has a pretty good impact and a really good speed of delivery, so they always sound quite fast, quite articulate. I was quite impressed by the ability to wake up bass down low and have a quite natural and full-bodied mid-range. I felt that the treble was like a double-edged sword, so um, I I liked that it had a sparkle up top, but I didn't like that it asks for a lot of attention, uh, the treble region. So it can get a little bit bright in the long run with the stock ear tips. But I will have some uh, recommendations later on how to solve that and how to avoid that. So I played my favorite songs and I was enjoying well, all my jazz, my rock tunes with the same engagement level. So I believe that it has a pretty good uh, detailed retrieval, a decent pinpoint imaging around the room and a medium sized sound stage uh, that works uh, even great with crowded music. So Starfield is mostly linear sounding and quite revealing with just a small hint of warmness and sparkle up top. When it comes to bass I immensely enjoy a linear bass response that can go as low as 20 Hz having a good sustain and a nice decay. So I immediately fired my usual bass tracks um, and at the 0.55 on the Invisible Sun by the Prodigy, I felt that 20 Hz rumble that normally only great performing IEMs and uh, full size planars can reproduce. So it had multiple layers of it, it was going really low, that was a big surprise for me. It had a great sustain, I'm glad that decay was neither too fast or too slow, just spot on. Sub bass was always pretty clean sounding, uh, deep reaching, it had a decent slam and impact. 
Uh, mid bass has a pretty nice presence. Uh, it always makes an appearance. Uh, it adds just a little bit of naturalness and warmness to the mix. So I don't consider the mid bass uh, overdone. It is linear sounding by my standards in terms of uh, frequency response. So in this regard, I think that start field is already impressive in my book. Moving on from bass to mid-range is made in a natural and smooth fashion without a single drop in the frequency response. So just a beautiful clean line across the bass and mid-range. I think that the vocal performance is quite amazing. Um, it's full-bodied almost all the time. Uh, female voices have an interesting pitch and uh, are not bothersome in the long run. And the male voices are sounding much heavier, much more imposing, uh, guttural somehow, quite real sounding. So uh, dynamic drivers always were champions in this region, I mean in the mid-range, and Starfield is really no different. Uh, the only thing that I dislike about them in the mid-range is the upper mid-range that loses just a little bit of energy. There is a gentle slope that uh, creates a hollow effect on the higher pitched voices. Even listening to some jazz, uh, I feel a lower involving factor with that music. So I want my mid-range smooth, or full-bodied all, all the time, very present but that is not happening, especially in the upper mid-range. So it has just a shorter decay up, up there. It doesn't pulsate as much and uh, just loses a little bit of presence. Since I have a huge ear tip collection at my disposal, I decided trying a few of them. And when I moved to memory foam ear tips, I had a big surprise uh, that I didn't expect because the presence in the mid-range came back, warmth came back, uh, even male voices started sounding more real. Uh, guitars and violins uh, vibrated more and the naturalness came back in full force. So if you want to improve that mid-range, a $6 investment uh, will change them drastically in a very good way with a pair of memory foam uh, ear tips. Treble for me is presented as a double-edged sword, as I told you before. So uh, on one hand, the transition from uh, upper mid-range to lower treble is again uh, pretty smooth and not bothersome in any way. It has just the right amount of details, of presence and uh, sharpness. But on the other hand, the upper treble response is making me uncomfortable uh, if I'm listening with the stock silicone ear tips. So there are just very few moments when a sharp note will bother me for a second or less and that note will come back again and maybe will appear in another tracks. And um, the truth is that the, the upper treble is very, very present with rock tunes and uh, since there is a lot of uh, cymbals, bells all over the place. Bottom line is that uh, in its stock form, Starfield is not a recommended IEM with rock, but it really depends on the listener. So I like my treble to be linear, to be present, to be outlined, but never overdone or on, on any range. So uh, Starfield is somehow um, impresses with that uh, crispness, with that over sharpness, but it will not sound linear and smooth and uh, I cannot listen for a longer period of time with them in uh, its stock form. And I again decided uh, listening uh, with the medium sized memory foam ear tips and what a huge difference. It's almost unbelievable uh, that all the harshness just went, went away out of the window in an instant. So uh, treble detail uh, remained intact. That is very important. The out outline of those notes remained um, clear and vivid. Even the longer vibration of the treble remained too as well. So the only difference is that those harsh notes are nowhere to be found. That is amazing. And I can listen now to my rock tunes much, much easier now. So it sounds much more smoother right now, more natural and more easy going. And this is basically the cheapest uh, $6 upgrade that you can have with your Moondrop Starfield. As for transit response, that 10 mm driver sounded fast, it sounded nimble. So the transit response is actually quite good, so no complaints here. However, when it comes to slam, I think um, Starfield is not the most impressive IEM because it doesn't carry a lot of air with every note and uh, the punch is just not the best. Uh, the culprit here is obviously the driver size uh, and the sad truth is that you cannot have them all in a $110 uh, IEM. Uh, I feel the sub bass, I feel its speed of the bass, I feel uh, how it's going really low, but I don't feel that ultimate punch that I so crave about. So from a bunch of mobile sources that I tried them with, uh, I think that uh, Fio M M15 DAP was the most, uh, had the best slam. So uh, it would be stupid recommending a, a very expensive DAP with some affordable IMs, IMs, so I'm not gonna do that. But I'm going to recommend uh, again those uh, memory foam ear tips uh, because with them slam again is clearly improving. Uh, bass starts pumping and raising my mood level. 
probably again, the third time I'm telling you that this is the best $6 investment that you can have uh, with them. As for soundstage, Startfield has a medium to large soundstage size. It's not impressively huge by any means, but it's, uh, it's big and uh, wide nonetheless. So uh, listening to some intimate sounding jazz, uh, everything just happens outside my head, some, I think on the shoulder level. So sounds are layered, uh, cleverly positioned around me. Uh, with M15 by Fio, Starfield started sounding much deeper. Uh, somehow the empty space between those uh, musical notes expanded and as a result I see just a bigger picture in front of me. I think they do respond great with a better source, with a better amplification, uh, with a better source material and uh, those benefits can be spotted quite easily. As for transparency and details, uh, it is not offering a grainy presentation and it's always uh, clear and crisp sounding. So I think that uh, detail retrieval is good too and thanks to that uh, spike in the upper treble it gives that fake impression that uh, you're hearing a super detailed and super transparent sound which in reality is not really the case. So I can hear those tiny details and uh, here and there but um, I need to stress a little bit myself uh, for that to hear them. I also did some measurements using a mini DSP ear system. Uh, I will just briefly show you the frequency response uh, using the stock ear tips. Then look at this huge difference, especially in the treble region using the memory foam ear tips. Here is the total harmonic distortion reading, which is quite amazing considering the price point. Waterfall and spectrogram are showing the hotspots and uh, as you can see the upper treble is bothersome in the long term. Decay shows a longer vibration of the driver, but for a dynamic driver this can be considered as a normal behavior. So if you want a longer measurement analysis, please check my written review below. I also compared them with the Syngot EN700 Pro and with uh, Knowledge Zenit AS16, which both are really close in terms of price. But since I don't want to make this video super long or boring, uh, please uh, check my uh, written review below. Now going on into the conclusion, uh, if I'm overlooking that uh, treble performance with the stock silicone ear tips, I can hardly find uh, anything to complain about in terms of uh, looks or in terms of sound. So Starfield is not perfect uh, by any means, but uh, it comes really close to being one uh, compared to the other IEMs in the same price bracket. So if you want to rock out uh, with them and not bothered by that brightness, then I strongly recommend uh, uh, buying some uh, memory foam ear tips. It's basically the best uh, possible upgrade you can have with them at any price, at the price of a pizza slice. Yeah. <laughs> okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed my review. My full in-depth review is uh, waiting on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and thank you for doing that. As usual, be positive, uh, listen to my music and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.